r slash ask reddit what's the biggest culture shock you ever experienced i grew up in a relatively poor neighborhood lot of rough shit going on there but we won't discuss all of it suffice it to say even at a fairly young age i was pretty sure i'd seen some shit in middle school i made friends with a kid that lived in the trailer park across town the trailer park kids are a whole different type of poor. I remember the kid I was friends with as soon as I got there goes let's go to the creek. Darius got his fishing pole back. Okay, whatever the hell that means. So we go down to the creek and there's this kid Darius and he's fishing in a creek and there's about 12 kids standing around watching him. Every so often he's catching a fish and handing it to one of the kids and the kid is taking the fish and running off giddy as hell. He finally catches one and hands it to my friend. He and I skip off back to his trailer. My friend takes the fish, as is, puts it in the microwave, and then when the microwave beeps he takes it out and starts eating it with a fork. I almost puked. That's kind of sweet. Darius giving each of the kids a fish to eat. I agree. Actually, Darius has a lot in common with Jesus Christ. Rock concerts in Japan. You have a number on your ticket and everyone queues according to that number. Yes. They managed to queue off hundreds of people in front of a venue according to the order in which they bought their ticket. It's fair. If you buy your ticket early you can get the chance for a better spot and you have a chance to buy limited merch that is usually sold out after minutes. When the venue opens, they call out every number and as soon as yours is called out you can go in. They do that every time. They do that at small venues with 20 people waiting and they do that at festivals. Another thing. Even after 2 days of festival, the venue is clean as duck. Not one water bottle, not one wrapping paper or anything. I was at Summer Sonic, Fuji Rock and Osaka Met Rock, and it was clean everywhere. Edit. Because my comment blew up I thought I'd throw in another fun story. It was at a Trico concert in Osaka. I was really far back, behind a guardrail. A girl next to me went to the toilet after the first supporting act finished. She left her towel and her smartphone behind and nobody dared to take her spot. 10 minutes later she was back. She was alone there. Japan is all about the R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Proceeds to throw giant, stuffed poke balls at strangers. Leaves a dead fish on a taxi cab and goes to a religious site and prays for beaches. But he didn't do it for the views. He gets views. When a large Maori man asked to touch noses with me in greeting. The dude looked pissed until I manned up and was the first to touch noses. Then he had one of the best smiles I've ever seen on a mountain of a man. It lit up the entire cultural center. Plot twist. Dude was just weird. That's not actually a thing. Close in Polynesian cultures as well. Not so much anymore in Hawaii. Grasp forearms and stare right eye right in each other's face. Howley means no breath. Which is what white people get called because Captain Cook shook hands from arm's length. They didn't share each other's breath. Also translated as prayer without breath. Because of how Christians prayed. Small town Oklahoma as a black man by myself. I was in a bar and was actually told you no. You just changed my opinion about black people. It was by an older white guy who hadn't seen a black person in person since Vietnam. Edit. That was what he said but he probably meant never spend time talking to any. Edit. We had a long conversation before he dropped that nugget. Edit. I took his statement to mean he hadn't dealt with a black person in any meaningful way but I wasn't going to argue semantics with him. That's equally parts sad and uplifting. And it only happened 4 years ago. Weirdly enough. It was returning to America after spending years abroad in Albania. As mentioned elsewhere in this thread, Albania didn't have any international food chains or restaurants. Everything was local and, usually, tasted great. I think what it was for me, was when I was going to Albania. I psyched myself up. I knew I was going to a foreign country and that things would be different. And they were. Most stores were no bigger than the size of my bedroom back home. Open air street markets were common and roadside shops were everywhere. Most people didn't own vehicles and walked or relied on public transportation. But when I returned to America, I was just going home and didn't really think about it much. But after several years it was weird. The day after returning home, we went to a Costco. Walking around that place on that day was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. 
Packages of food were huge and there was just so much of everything. We drove our cars everywhere and I realized my little hometown doesn't even have a proper bus system. That was easily my biggest culture shock, and it was about my own. Reverse culture shock is a thing. I moved to Poland in 1989, as communism was failing. For 6 months, Coke was sold on one side of the city, and Pepsi had the other side. 95% of the cars were two models, all painted in the exact same colors for the past 40 years. None of the buildings were painted, you could get anywhere on public transportation. For almost free, bus ticket was zero dollars, zero 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 one each. Not one McDonald's or franchise store in the whole country. Almost every basic commodity like soap, cheese there was only one choice. I literally felt like I had entered the twilight zone. Best trip ever. Watching children in Mexico happily eating crickets like they were popcorn. Also, 4 or 5 year old kids out at 10 pm to sell gum. They also sell cigarettes. WHO thinks insects can be a major source of solving worldwide hunger crises. It makes sense to be fair. They have no bones. Need little prep. Apparently roasting locusts and adding honey is amazing. And spawn breed based on degree days. So they grow quickly. A lot. And potentially year round. I had a French friend who told me chocolate covered ants are a tasty treat. I was never sure how serious they were. Holidaying in Tokyo and watching 5 year old kids walk themselves home from school and catching public transport. All by themselves. I taught in Japan. My first week there a kid fell asleep on the train and some random old lady buttoned up his jacket and tucked his bag under his arm. Makes you wonder what is different socially about Japan that allows them to have these interactions. Going to the USA and seeing that the water in the toilets is so full. How the duck am I meant to shit without getting my ass wet? Also NYC taxis will blare their horns at ducking anything. Pedestrians still on the crossing 2 seconds after the light goes green. Honk. Car in front of you gently brakes. Honk. Bird in the road. Honk. Be in the car. Honk. The street lights turn on. Honk. They're super aggressive drivers. That's just NYC for you. Very fast paced. Go to other places and people are a lot more patient. LOL come down to Arkansas and people will drive 15 miles per hour. 24. 14 kilometers per hour. Under the speed limit. Personally, that would irritate me more than aggressive drivers. So I'm Norwegian. But I went to New Zealand for a year. The culture shock for me was how open Kiwis talk. And how there's no such thing as stranger danger. And as a typical Norwegian introvert, it took a while to get used to it. I'd meet a stranger and they'd be breaking the touching barrier right away and start talking about their cousin's rash and all their weekend plans. Even bigger shock returning to silent Norway. I was lost in Oslo looking for a certain address and my phone wasn't working right. I did what most Americans would do is and stopped the next person I saw and asked if they could point me in the right direction. Well the first guy I asked was an Afghan refugee who actually spoke okay amounts of English. He was so excited that I wanted to talk to him that he personally walked me to my direction and was going on and on how no one wants to talk to him both because culturally you don't talk to strangers and because a lot of people don't like immigrants like himself. Coming from Los Angeles where probably every other person you pass is an immigrant from somewhere. I found it totally puzzling. I'm Norwegian. And every time I ask a refugee immigrant about some non-consequential thing, like where the closest 7 stroke 11 is, we get talking about all sorts of things. With a Norwegian person, this would be horror. You and I don't know each other. This isn't right. I have enough friends. But with a person from another country, it's great. Cause I know I probably won't meet them again. They just want to talk. I ended up talking with a Turkish guy on the same bus for 3 months pretty much daily, and it got to be a real high point of the day. He had his family moved over here, and he was working 2 jobs supporting them, and buying properties back home. He was doing a sort of BNB thing, in a hoe. He never asked my name, and I never asked his. It was just something to do on the bus while we were getting somewhere. This is highly unusual from Norwegian to Norwegian. I think it's not that we're racist, or distrusting of others, it's just that you mind yours, and I'll mind mine kind of attitude. 
It's kind of sad, but great when you just want to be left alone on the bus or at the coffee shop with your music podcast whatever. When I was a kid one of my mother's friends was a woman from a very tough background who had left her husband because he used to hit her and her children. She had three kids and was living in a two bedroom council flat in a tough part of Glasgow. My mum met her because they were both doing part time university degrees as mature students. She was studying to get a teaching qualification. I became friends with one of this woman's kids when I was about 6 or 7. I'd go over to his house for the night sometimes and we'd generally wander around the local neighborhood just doing what kids do. He always carried a rucksack and was always on the lookout for empty glass soda alcohol bottles. If he saw one, he'd grab it and stick it in the rucksack. After a while I started bringing a rucksack along when I visited so we could double up on glass bottle carrying capacity. The reason he did this was that. In Glasgow back then, a sort of proto-recycling scheme meant that every one of those bottles was redeemable for 5p at any shop that sold them. They'd collect them, give out 5p per bottle, send them off to be recycled, and be reimbursed for their time by the local government. We'd collect a bunch of these then. When we went back to the flat in the afternoon, my friend would proudly hand over a few quid in coins to his mother. He used to do this constantly and it meant, this being the 1980s, a decent little earner to help pay for a bit of the household expenses and so on. I came from a family with a detached house in the suburbs that had two cars, two parents, two nice holidays a year, and no real worries when it came to money. Not rich, just lucky to be standard middle class. Meanwhile this woman was raising three children by herself while studying to become a teacher, in a tiny little damp flat in a bad part of town. She never asked her son to do what he did, he just took it upon himself age 7 or whatever to go out and do it. It took me a while to understand what was happening but, once I did, I can honestly say it was one of the defining events of my life. Not sure if it counts as a shock as much as a slow realization because I've been going there all my life. But once I got to about 15 and visited Italy I started getting asked out by guys who just wouldn't take no for an answer. You reject a guy in the UK and they'll normally take it well, unless they're a bit unhinged. But in Italy I said no to strangers, friends I'd known for years, people I'd met that night or people who were otherwise normal who'd be so persistent that I had to either leave or use my cousin as a fake BF. My friend showed me a photo of herself and her mother on holiday in Italy. The two of them are smiling for the camera oblivious to the crowd of leering men surrounding them. She said she just got used to it. Reminds me of the photograph an American girl in Italy by Ruth Orkin. Depicting a young girl walking the streets of Florence getting leered at by every guy on the street. HTTP colon slash slash www Orkin photo. Com Orkin press WP content uploads slash 2010 stroke 11 slash Orkin. American girl KPF. JPG edit. The photo is from 1951 for the curious. I am Ty. Michael Gusa from Argentina and Spain. I eat lunch at 12. 30 hours and they are shocked. And the fact that for them lunch is at 16. 00, zero is too crazy for me. Argentina is on a different schedule. I lived in Buenos Aires for couple months. You can hardly find anything open before 10. 00. zero. It's a city that wakes up late and stays up late for sure. I ducking love that city though. This is where I was meant to live, I believe. I set up a nice candle lit dinner at home for GF once. In the middle of dinner she drops that candles remind her of extremely poor family who had to ration their candles into minutes and they had to multitask to conserve light. You had to do your homework all at the same time cause the candles only lasted so long. Still tears me up. Been there. Done that. India is a pretty much a dark country at night. Pun intended. Electricity is rationed to this day almost everywhere. Those who can afford. Buy battery banks and diesel generators. Those who don't. Use candles and LPG lighting gas clinders. Pretty common. I've studied first 12 years of my education life under candles so I can relate to that. Edit. Didn't want to give out details but seems to me you need an eye opener of sort. HTTPS colon slash slash www. 
Cash my monitor, in details slash 136,435 slash CMS directives fail to end power crisis in Kashmir check these. Ducking 42 hours a week curtailment in the city. The situation is beyond terrible in the rural areas and this article was written a few months ago. The situation has not changed even today. HTTPS colon slash slash www in Dustin times. Com India new power curtailment with night long cutters valley up in arms story ANQ2 FZM Swatch X KBV810. HTML here is an old article which sadly holds true today. Edit 2. HTTPS colon slash slash Kashmir Observer net slash 2017 slash local news PDD forgets issuing curtailment schedule winter 26,455 such as the plight of the PDD consumers that in metered areas. The load shedding is witnessed for 6 hours every day and that is done 3 times on daily basis. Edit 3. And the trolls have started to pour in. My intention was to not give details about my place but it seems no one wants to believe a 42 hour electricity curtailment is impossible in 2018 but it's for real. Indian trolls have started to pick up on the mere mention of JNK and even when I had used India without actually naming the place. I'm being blamed for making wild claims and ad hominem attacks have started. Grow up. This is a reality I am living in and you all are welcome to come and enjoy this for yourself. A lot of people are saying because this isn't happening to them. That would imply it doesn't exist but that's stupid. This r slash ascritic post was supposed to ask about cultural shocks. I experienced them firsthand when I was in Delhi and other states. I used a generic term Indian or is it that even online the mere mention of JNK inside stock hate all the while when idiots are spending billions on inclusion. Thank you. All the Randians can go circle jerk duck themselves. If you don't want J and K to be used to represent India, duck you. That's what every Kashmiri has been demanding for 70 odd years. Leave us alone. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.